today is we're going to go, we're going to discuss a topic today. The topic is going to be the blood of Christ. And that's the topic that we're going to discuss today. And first and foremost, we want to say, you know, all praises um, to the Heavenly the Father through Christ for giving us the wherewithal and the understanding for bringing us here to go over scriptures with our people. And the reason why I came up with that topic, the blood of Christ, is because um, last weekend we got a chance to go out <clears throat> um, on the street um, and to teach, which you know we haven't we haven't done that in a while. Um, so last weekend we were at the Juneteenth. We went out and we were teaching on the street, and I had uh, um, I had a conversation with um, someone. They came up to me and they were asking. Um, questions about what he can do to you know to get himself more right or better and the I mean he was very honest he pretty opened up and he told me a lot of stuff that he was doing you know that was wrong and he know it's wrong and he just wanted someone to go over um, you know some scriptures with him or to get some kind of understanding so one of the things that we discussed was um, what I said to him, I read the scripture, and I was like, listen, our bodies is not our own. So when we're defiling our bodies, you know, and if, if we know that, it's, that what we're doing is wrong and we're not repenting, we're going to have to pay for that. And I was like, furthermore, I was like, you, we all know that Jesus Christ came, shed his blood on the cross, and that wasn't done in vain. That was done for us to what? Look at and take heed to our ways, what we're doing. Right. See, what we're doing is right or wrong according to the scriptures. And if it's wrong, we change those ways that we have. That's why Christ came and shed his blood on the cross. So a lot of people have that misconception of, well, you know what? I'm saved by the blood of Christ. Thinking that, okay, you can just say that and not have any actions or anything behind that to back it up. Consequences. Right, consequences. Yeah, they don't take heed to the consequences. They just... A famous church saying is, I'm going to plead the blood on that. No, yeah. the blood is on your head because why? Christ came. There's no cloak on sin anymore. Right. So when you're doing things that go opposite, you're going to be the what? The blood. Exactly. You're going to be that sacrifice, meaning you're going to get destruction if you don't repent. And that's what people don't understand. Go exactly. Ahead. So that's the point. So the first scripture that we're going to read is 1 Timothy 1 and 15. Mm -hmm. We're going to read that, and again, the topic is the blood of Christ, and we're going to go over some scriptures here just to bring out the point of repentance and changing, and what the blood of Christ is all about. So 1 Timothy 1, verses 15. 1 Timothy 1, verse 15, it reads, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Okay, so who is this talking here, right? This is what? Paul. Paul, right. Paul is talking and is writing a letter to Timothy. He says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Mm -hmm. That what? That Christ came into the world to save sinners. So Christ came into the world. He taught us repentance. He shed his blood as a sacrifice, right? For sinners, for people that commit sin, people that break the laws of God. Then he says, of whom I am chief. Mm. So Paul was what? A chief sinner, a main sin, sinner, a big sinner. He was a murderer, right? He persecuted the church at the time um, when it was just being formulated. Mm -hmm. He was going around and killing people. So he was a big time murderer. Just like today we might look at someone or, or someone we might know in our neighborhoods mm -hmm. or on TV or whatever the case might be. It's like, man, that dude is a vicious dude, man. Just a straight-up cold-hearted killer. Let me just say this, though, and that's a good point you're making, brother. Um, the operative word in that phrase, it says, who I am chief. But basically what he's going into, when on a faithful day when he got knocked down the road of Damascus, he was, meaning past tense. Right. So he still wasn't rounding up people for teaching Christ and killing them and putting them in bodies, was he? Nope. He didn't do it and then say, I'm going to plead the blood on that. Nope. Uh, I'm still doing these things, but I'm just going to plead the blood. Nope. No, so that's the key. And that's what, in essence, we do. Right. We commit adultery, fornication of all four swords, murder, stealing, lying, cheating, defrauding one another. And when we get caught or we get our cards pulled, what do we say? 
These are people that go to church. Right. I'm going to bleed the blood. Right. Go ahead, bro. Okay, now that's a good point. So um, let's define sin. Uh -huh. Let's see what sin is to, to explain to people and to show people exactly what sin is. So 1 John chapter 3 and 4, because in, in dealing with people and in talking to people, you know, you get to un, you get to find out that a lot of times what we think the, the when we teach or whatever we might think something is simple, but to other people it's not so simple. So right. we're gonna go over the and explain these things so that people can understand, and, and we're also gonna show that it's a process. Right. Okay, it's not something that's gonna happen overnight. But you can't make excuses like what the brother was saying. Oh, you go out commit adultery. Oh. Pfft. I, I plead on the, on the blood of Christ. Exactly. You can't do that. So let's define what sin is. Let's see what sin is. 1 John 3 and 4. 1 John 3 verse 4. Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So it says whosoever. So whoever is committing sin. They're transgressing meaning, meaning going against the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is going against the laws of God. So let's name some laws of God. Let's bring out and explain some laws of God. Everybody knows what the Ten Commandments, right? Um, thou shalt not commit adultery. That's a law, mm -hmm. right? But what happens? Especially amongst us, man, you know what, man? That, her man ain't doing it, right? right. You know what I'm saying? It, she always in my face, always coming on to me. So on and so forth. That what's that? You're going to, when you commit adultery with that man's wife. You're going against the law. Exactly. You're going against that law. So you're sinning. Exactly. So you, that makes you a sinner, and that's one of the reasons why Christ came into the world to what? Die on the cross as a sacrifice, right. so that we can repent from those things uh -huh. and um, obtain that mercy. From God Himself. Right. So Paul went from being a chief sinner to one that started walking in righteousness because he did what repent. Right. So this like okay when you look at the news today, you tell you brought it up. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So adultery is the commandment, but then there's a lot of other laws that fall under the statutory right. commandment of thou shalt not commit adultery. Right. Pedophilia, what they call it today, pedophilia, incest, what they call it today homosexuality, lesbianism, so on and so forth. What did they just pass in New York State? They just passed the gay marriage Exactly. Right. So now, basically, what that does is to said the hell with the, what the both sides said. Right. And these people that talk about the laws are done away with, only the ones that they want to be done away with. Right. But these are the things that are going on, and this is not about gay bashing. It's about standing up and being righteous in the sight of the most high. If the most high said a man should not lie with a man like he lies with a woman, same with a woman lying with a woman. He meant that, and that's right. a law. Right. So when you go against that, what are you? You're, You're a sinner. sinner. Right. Christ came to shed his blood to deliver sinners, right. not to cover people that continue in sin. Exactly. Go ahead, bro. Now, that's a good point because some of these people, <laughs> in fact, when these people are getting married, let's say, for example, the gay marriage, where are they going to get married? In a church. Yeah. Well, a lot of them are. A lot of them are, most of them, not all of them. So so-called church, yeah. <laughs> what should be a church, <laughs> right. right? So they're going to these places, but guess what? They're not being taught that you know what what you're doing right now, you're committing sin, right? Because this is not marriage. Exactly. Marriage was set from the very beginning in Genesis, and then Christ came later on and says that what therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. Okay. So male and female, right? Right. So these are some of the things that we have to look at when you know when we're discussing this topic, right? Okay. Um, go to Second Timothy two. We're gonna read Second Timothy two and nineteen. Second Timothy two verse nineteen. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal: the Lord knoweth them that are His, and let Everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 
Okay, so if you're calling yourself, you know, a, a, a so-called Christian, a follower of Christ, mm -hmm. you love Christ, um, you want to get yourself right, um, you know, you want to change some, some things about you and you know that it's wrong, this scripture is saying that what? Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ mm. depart from iniquity. So, you name in the name of Christ, oh, Christ is my Lord and Savior. I love Christ. Oh, you know, uh, he died He died for us. He died for sinners. This is saying, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart. When you depart, what are you doing? You're leaving off. You're not doing it. You're leaving it. You're departing from iniquity. Iniquity is what? Sin and wickedness in the eyes of God. All the commandments, whenever we break it or go against it, that's iniquity. We're committing sin. So it says, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So if we're going to claim the blood of Christ, guess what? We have to depart from our wickedness, the wickedness that we're doing, the selling drugs to one another, the, the, the getting women pregnant as a man, um, leaving them, right? Um, so the, the, the child is growing up without what? Uh, two parents in the, ho in the, in the house, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes being left to themselves, right? Then that worsens the conditions, mm -hmm. right? Things like that. And these are some of the people that say, what? You know what? I believe in Christ. I go to church, this and that, so on and so forth. This is saying what? Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. We have to leave off from those things. Because that's why Christ came and shed his blood for us, not to continue in iniquity and not to continue in sin. Right. Let's go from there to Luke 6 and 46. We're going to read this almost the same thing out of his own mouth, out of Christ's own mouth. Luke 6 and 46. And let's see what this says. Luke, the sixth chapter, verse 46 verse. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So Christ is talking out of his own mouth. And what is he saying? Why are you calling me Lord, Lord, and you're not doing the things which I say? So all the things that Christ commanded for us to do, and we're going to get into some examples in, in a minute, those are the things that we have to do that he commanded for us to do because that's one of the reasons why he came. Mm. He came and lived here in the earth as a man, as a fleshy person, he came and taught us how to live a perfect life without sin and without offense in the eyes of God, right? And then finally what? He shed his blood for us for the remission of our sins. So he's saying, why are you calling me Lord, Lord, and you're not doing the things that I say? So if we're, if we're calling on the name of Christ, guess what? We have to do the things that he's commanded, commanded us to do. So just a point on that. A lot of people don't understand that. For us to realize and have the blood cover us, we have to be obedient. Right. And where do we get that instruction from? Let me just read this real quick. Hebrews, the fifth chapter, I'm going to read verses 8 and 9. It says, Hebrews, the fifth chapter, verse 8 and 9. He said, why call me Lord, Lord, and you're not listening to me? Right. Meaning, when you listen to someone, that means you're being obedient. Mm -hmm. And that you're following them. Right. This is what it says here. Hebrews 8 excuse me, 5, 5th chapter, verse 8. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. So, Christ was the son of the Most High. Mm -hmm. But he did what? He learned obedience. So that means he was listening and doing the thing that God was saying as exactly. a son. Right. Read on. And being made perfect, that's where the perfection came, right. through him listening and following, dictating his life and guiding his actions and deeds he did within his body when he was walking on the earth right. based on the obedience he had to the Heavenly Father. A lot of us don't do that. Right. I want to be gay and I want to be married. That's the latest thing that's going on. Mm -hmm. I want to be a murderer. Right. Call me sea murder. <laughs> that's what after my name. Call right. me spray because I spray, spray it in them. You know what I mean? Right. This is the kind of things that's going on. It says, and being made perfect through that obedience, he became the <laughs> author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So the only way we can enter into that what? Eternal life, that salvation, that kingdom that's to come, is to be obedient and right. listen to him. Exactly. So because you we not if we not departing from iniquity, 
and we're not doing the things he said, which that was one of them. Right. He's not our Lord. Exactly. Satan is our Lord. Right. That's what we have to go on square. I just want to point out. No, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I want to. I'm going to stay here in Hebrews five and eight. I'm going to go, go back and explain something else too. Last week, at, um, the conversation that I was talking about, the guy kept asking, well, I, he was telling me some of the stuff he was um, battling with. Mm -hmm. And I was showing him in the scriptures, you know, how it's wrong. So he says, yeah, I understand that, but how do you stop? How do you say? He kept asking that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, listen, bro, this thing is a constant fight and a struggle. Mm -hmm. Whenever those things come in your mind to what? Shoot up drugs in your body? go steal, guess what? You have to fight those thoughts off in your mind. So, yes, it's not an overnight process, or no, it's not going to go away right away. It's not going to go away. It's not going to go away, right. It's not to suppress it. Exactly. But there's a point here, though, though, that you just read. It says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Exactly. So Christ had to go through the things that he went through. Right. To what become more obedient to God. Right. That's the example that He left for that's, us. That's the point. Yeah, so right. the point that we're going over now is a lot of times because of the time or whatever that we have in these radio shows, we go over scriptures and it might come off like, okay, it's just like an overnight process. Just, just do it, David. Yeah, just do it. Yeah. No, but that's not the point. Because of time, because we're pressed for time, we really don't have time to go into all the details. But it's a process, it's a fight, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're fighting and not giving in right. to those thoughts, to what I'm gonna shoot up drugs in my body because you know I just I I'm just dying to have that feeling. Right. You know I'm gonna go steal this uh, this jewelry, this cash or whatever because you know what I just I gotta feed myself whatever. Or I'm a young woman I like to fill up a man's flesh on me so I'm gonna open my legs. Right. To every man that come around. Exactly. Every time Dick and Harry as they said. Right. You know these are all things that happen and you know what that's a beautiful point right there, bro, because that's what the people miss. Right. They don't understand <laughs> that Christ when he came and walked in the flesh. The scriptures tell us Hebrews four before this says. He was tempted in all points just as we were. Just as we were, right. But he what? Overcame and he didn't give in to the lust because that's how you commit sin. Exactly. By going, it ain't the Satan made me do it. Nope. Ain't the devil made me do it. It's you going in and giving in and being overcome by your lust and you going into the thing that's wrong in the sight of the Most High instead of doing the thing that's right. Through exactly. obedience, you learn how to what? You learn how to become more obedient exactly. to God through exactly. the true suffering. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a good point because, mm -hmm. you know, people might um, see us or listen to us or whatever and think that, man, uh, they, they got it right. They got it all together. No. <laughs> we're going over these scriptures because, and we're explaining it this way because these are some of the things that we have put off, some of those things that we mentioned, but we're still continuing to battle and fight. The lust and the wickedness that's in our mind. My mind is wicked. Mm -hmm. And constantly thoughts come in that I have to constantly fight off by saying, you know what, that goes against the scriptures. Right. Christ didn't think that way. Christ didn't deal that way. Mm -hmm. So it's a constant fight and a struggle. And I do that because there's only two choices. Either we can live in our lust in this time now and have pleasure in it, or... We can fight and we might obtain that eternal life there when Christ comes back. There's two choices. Right. And I'd rather do the latter one. Right, right. So that's the point. So let's go from there. Let's look at some of the things. Actually, let's Luke go back six. to Luke 6 and 46. Okay. Read that again. Luke 6, verse 46. And why call ye, excuse me, and why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? So again, he's saying, why are you calling him Lord, Lord, your Lord and Savior, your personal say, your whatever? And you're not doing the things that he's saying. So now let's go into some specifics. Let's look at, go to Matthew 7. Let's look at some of the things that he told us to do. Right? So Matthew 7, verses 12. Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So Christ is saying that what? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do we even so to them. So this is a worldly saying, the golden rule or whatever, mm -hmm. but that so-called golden rule came from the Bible. It came from what Christ said. These mm -hmm. very words here. Mm -hmm. 
this statement encompasses like a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, it says, whatsoever, um, whatsoever men should do to you, do you even so to them. Okay. Would you like someone to sleep with your sister, your daughter, right? Get her pregnant, just leave her. Leave her alone. Ne mm. Never have anything to do with her. Mm. Just toss her to the side. Mm. Treat her like a piece of meat. Mm -hmm. Would you like that? The answer is no. Mm -hmm. Because what most people are what? Protective of their what? Their siblings, their mm -hmm. family, right? right? Man, if some dude would ever do it to my sister, man, I'd man, I kill you. Mm. You hear that, right? right? But yet and still, the person that's saying that what is going out and treating women like trash. Mm -hmm. Right? It ain't my sister. It ain't my daughter. Yeah, exactly. So, the, the scriptures are saying, all things whatsoever that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. Another point, would you like someone to what sell drugs, poison, to your children? Alright, to your family. Why would you do that? Why would you sit on a block, sling rocks, right? Something that's poisoning, killing off our people. Why would you do that if you wouldn't like someone to do that to you or to someone you might know? Mm. Why would you do that? And these very same things that we're mentioning, mm -hmm. right? People say, oh yeah, Christ is my savior. This and that, what, what? We go out, we commit fornication. All these different things, right? It could be um, a, a woman, for example, sleeping around with a, 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 her best friend's man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she doesn't know anything. But yet and still, every Sunday or whatever the case might be, in church, so-called singing and praising God, saying He's your personal Savior, and you're pleading the blood of Christ, or whatever it is that you say, right? But we're doing all these different things, and this is what Christ is saying. Why are you calling me Lord, Lord, and you're not doing the things that I say? Right. These are some of the things that we have to repent from. Right, right. because the point is when you look at what Christ said, I'm not going to read the scripture, I just want to say this. He said, I came that what? There is no more cloak over your sins. Right. If That's not what these so-called churches are dealing with. Right. they dealing with revivals, and they're going to save them based on this sort, and they're going to do this, and they're going to do that. No. What you're supposed to be doing if you're really dealing in Christ is teaching the people to repent so that that blood does what? Cover them. Right, for the remission of sins. Exactly. <clears throat> so that's the whole point. That's what Christ came teaching, isn't it? Right, yep. But that's not what's being taught. They're doing all because they got foundations, they got endowments, they got projects, they got membership, they building buildings, they making franchise churches, and all these places you got a whole lot of dysfunctional people, like you said. Right. Dealing with dysfunctional issues spiritually, according to the Bible, mm -hmm. and that flips over into why we look so crazy, carnally. Right. Why we got women with five baby daddies, and why we got brothers with baby daddy issues. Why we got all this murder and mayhem on the street with little teeny boppers, right. taking guns and killing. Them. Why? Because the message of repentance for the remission of your sins is not being taught. Exactly. That's the point. Go ahead. Yep, and, that, and that's a good point. It's not being taught, and that's why, you know, we have all these different issues amongst us. Wherever we're scattered in the world, right. it's almost the same issues. Identical. Right, identical issues, the same things. Why? Because these things are not being taught, you know, and, and that's just the way it is. But we hope that, you know, this word goes out and whoever it's meant for, they take heed to it and read their Bibles and apply the things that are coming out mm -hmm. when they read it. So let's look at something else that Christ said. Go to Matthew 6. Matthew 6, we're going to read 19 through 21. Matthew 6, the cha uh, sixth chapter and the 19th verse. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor <laughs> rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay, so Christ is telling us that what? Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. You have a lot of people always they what do they do they look at they stay at home they look at these rap videos 
um, seeing these cats driving around in cars that are rented, seeing the flashy jewelry, seeing the women, seeing the money, so on and so forth. They what? Develop that covetous, or they have that covetous mind, right, where they're coveting after those things, and they what? Go out and try to emulate what they've seen, try to live that lifestyle mm -hmm. what they've seen, right? So it says, lay not up treasures for your, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. What? Our people, some of our people are laboring to be rich. They put that before everything else. Mm -hmm. They what? Go out, sling the most dope. Um, it, it, it could be a, a legitimate job. What? They stab everybody in the back, mm -hmm. right? Just to get to the top, right? Always scheming, always running some kind of scam. Right? What? Why? Because they're laying up treasures, riches, money, this paper money that we have, which is just corrupt in itself, mm -hmm. has no worth, no value. Mm -hmm. Right? They're laying up things like that for themselves upon earth where what? Moss and moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. You got what? Fifty thousand dollars in your house, someone could break it and steal it. Mm -hmm. Then after it's all gone, what is it worth? Nothing. So why are you why why are we doing things like that? When Christ says what lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, but it says what lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. The treasures in heaven that is talking about is talking about having the 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 righteous works um, that we the fruits right that we should have. Um, that's stored, that's recorded in a book mm -hmm. that's being written about our lives in heaven, mm -hmm. right? So that when that day come and that book is open, all those riches will be in that book where we can say, okay, you know what? You've done well. Mm -hmm. Inherit the blessing. Those are the things that we should be laboring and putting all our time and effort in mm -hmm. and not these worldly things that we see going on around us because believe it or not, these things are not going to last forever. Everything that we see here on this earth is going to be burnt up. Right. Only We can only save our souls. Only that lives on forever. Right. So after we die in this physical body that we are in, our souls move on to the spiritual mm -hmm. world, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right? Our souls still live on. So that's the only thing that we have that still that will uh, 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 stay alive forever. Right. And you want to get to the point where the one that we're dealing with, because it says, don't be fearful of man who can only kill you. Right. But be fearful of the most high who can destroy the body and what? Soul. Soul. Right. So basically, when you really get to it, I know what you heard, but the heck with what you heard. There's going to be a day where the righteous souls will live on and the unrighteous souls will be what? Destroyed. Right. And that's what we have to understand. That if we want to inherit eternal life, I know they got Dante's Inferno and pictures of people burning forever and ever and ever and ever. But, you know, when you get down to the bottom line, there is going to be no hint of wickedness when that righteous kingdom is set up. So those things are going to be destroyed just as well as all other things. And that's yeah. what we have to understand. That should be our goals, right? Exactly. And exactly. what you were breaking down is the commandment of thou shalt not covet. Yeah. Which is idolatry when you read the scriptures. And that's exactly. the thing that people have to understand that that <laughs> covetous spirit is going to be what our demise. Exactly. Greed is good. I need more. I got I got everything I need, but I need more. I need more. I need more. Right. And then you're doing all kind of wickedness and that, that wicked, covetous, idolatrous mindset to achieve it. Exactly. And that's one of the problems. What Christ said, listen, man, you can avoid the covetous spirit by doing this. Exactly. Putting this up in your mind. Exactly. Don't be put, building up on your treasures on earth. Right. Build up your treasure in heaven. Exactly. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, and, and, and that's, a, that's a real good point because... That's the um, next scripture we're going to mm -hmm. go to in Luke 12 where he talks about covenant. Mm -hmm. Because that's a big problem and a serious problem amongst us. Because I'm not sure if you got the... Um, I had sent out an a email article that I had read. Some guy in prison, um, he admitted to shooting two yeah, cops so in a 94 incident where he got shot. And the reason... <laughs> It, that blew my mind at first, but I'm like, okay, well, why am I shocked or surprised? Right. I mean, that's what happens. Right. You know, but then you got all these different conspiracy theories, and the it was just something, yeah. The government. And 
this and that. And it was just something wicked. The guy says, listen, I shot him and I kept his jewelry. I kept his ring, his his chain or whatever. And I gave 25000 to the dude that told me to shot him. Shit. C coveting. Yeah, right. Coveting. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. it, and coveting and lust is the same thing. It means desiring things that are wicked and evil. Exactly. Or desiring things that's not right for, for yours to desire. Like me desiring someone else's wife. Right. That's covenant. Exactly. Me desiring your car. I'm going to take it and jack it. Break yourself, fool. Like yeah. out of California, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to jack you. That's covenant. Right. And see, people don't, we use the word, the scriptural word, but understand what it is. Exactly. So when you thinking on other people's <clears throat> things, or thinking how you can get things by greedy gain and not righteously, you're covenant. Exactly. And you said it, it, it's, a, it's the right word, lust. Right. A lot of people don't associate with that word with it. But before, yeah. I'm, I'm going to explain this. I'm going to say a story, then, then I'm going to read this um, scripture, something that, that I saw. Mm -hmm. I was watching this, uh, it was a documentary, and it was about cocaine in the 80s in, in Miami. Uh, Cowboys? Yeah, Cocaine yeah, Cowboys right. Part 2. Right. Yeah, I so, that. one of the parts that was interesting was they interviewed this lawyer who became corrupted, right? right. So, he, he was explaining how he became corrupted. Because mm. before that, he was a straight up, you know, attorney, mm. good attorney, whatever. So, he said, um, I can't remember the exact story, but what happened was he went into a house, one of the drug dealers' house or whatever. And he saw like loads of cash yeah. laying around. This is the part that he says that got me. Mm -hmm. He says when he saw the money, he got excited. It was like a man <laughs> seeing a woman, a sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That most men know that feeling, right? right. You see a woman, you see, man, man. And for a righteous man, you gotta fight those thoughts <laughs> off. But someone out who's out in the world or whatever, living. Uh, according to this world, they're going to go right into the lust, right. go over, step to the woman, get her number, whatever, a couple weeks later, do their thing. Fornication. Right, fornication. There you go, send. But, what the guy was saying, when he saw that money, he got all excited. It was like he was seen like a woman. Right. And he said he lusted right. after what he saw. Right. And I was like, wow. I was like, you know what, that's a good point. Right. Because people normally associate that word lust. With sex. With just sex. Right. But lust, it could be for anything. Car. Just like in that case, yeah, money, car, whatever. Anger. Yeah, uh, that that yeah, too. I'm a killers do. Yeah, it just it makes. I, I'm yeah. just gonna. I just. I feel better right. if I can just take revenge. Exactly right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna take my anger out on him. I right. just. I'll just feel better if I can mm -hmm. do it that way. Mm -hmm. That's a lust. Mm -hmm. Because it's appealing to your desires right. and to your emotions. And they're evil. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So let's read Luke twelve fifteen. Luke, the 12th chapter, verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. So Christ is saying what? Take heed and beware of covetousness, which mm -hmm. is another word for lust. Mm -hmm. It says, For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. You just said it. Right, people saying, "Oh, I, I want more. Give me, give me, give me, give right. me more." A man's, our life should not be about that. It's, right. it, it ain't just about the things that we have. Mm -hmm. It's about just like what we explained: those fruits of the spirit, uh, getting that good mindset, mm -hmm. developing those good works, mm -hmm. having those things written down about us, mm -hmm. so that God will look on Christ will look on us favorable in that day. Right. That's what our life should be about, right. not in the things that we possess. It. Right. So when we look at we stay at home and we you know watch TV and see these rap videos, people driving around these fancy cars, the women, the women, the chain, the money flashing around, drinking, all whatever the popular drink is that time, uh, yeah, man, or that month. Life ain't about that, man. Because you know what, those things, the things that we're looking at, the scripture says, are what temporal. Right. It ain't gonna last. Right. We ain't gonna last forever. Right. We ain't gonna live forever. Our life is what? Short. Here today, gone tomorrow. Right. Right? That's what it is. So while we're on this earth, while we're living, while we're breathing, it's about us um, developing those right fruits and those, having those good works 
not breaking the commandments, not doing this what Christ is saying us not to do. And that's the understanding, like th this, what <clears throat> you're going into, to bring it up to make poor short people understand. We still are a message with the blood, right? Because only by the way of knowing those things that you're doing evil and repenting from them, right. knowing it, identify it, and repenting meaning turning away from, them, stop doing. Them, that's the only way the blood is going to cover you. Because the blood, believe it or not, is the sacrifice of what was spread for your remission of sins. Exactly. You can't get remission of sins if you continually sin. Exactly. So you have to stop sinning for the blood to cover you. And that perfect sacrifice, this is how merciful the Most High is, the Most High God is. That sacrifice is perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's holding for those of us that what? Turn from our ways and repent in the name of Christ. Exactly. And then that blood remission, because nothing is what remitted yeah. without bloodshed. Yeah, without the Bible blood. tells us that. Right. So that covers us, but you have to do the work. Exactly. To get the, you can't just like these people. I'm covered by the blood of Christ. I'll just plead the blood. You doing all kind of abominable acts. Your mind is all fixated on foolishness because you ain't being taught nothing in these finer institutions, so-called churches. Right. And you just continue in perpetual destruction, and you don't know the remedy. Why? Because you're not being taught the remedy. Exactly. And the, what we're going over, that is the remedy because it's written in the Bible. Ahead, exactly. Bro. And that's the point. So these examples that we're going over here, these are some of the things that we have to what, take heed to. Mm. And if we're into um, these, the, these things, if we're into this lifestyle and these things, we have to stop... Mm from committing these acts and that's when the blood of Christ what will be worthy for us exactly so that's the whole point mm -hmm. so let's go from there now let's now we're gonna go into a different phase let we're gonna now look at how do we make that change and how do we make the the blood of Christ the sacrifice worthy how do we do it mm -hmm. and we're gonna stick to what he said Matthew 4 mm -hmm. We're going to stick Matthew 4 and 17. Mm. The first thing that we have to do, Matthew 4 and 17, read that. Matthew 4, verse 17. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The whole entire Bible, from the beginning, from Genesis all the way through Revelations, is pretty much about repentance. The word repent, what that means is that we stop from doing what we think is right, and we go back to what God commanded us to do. That, that's mm -hmm. the simplest way I can explain it. That's the mm -hmm. word repent. So all the examples that we went over, the coveting, mm -hmm. right, the homosexual lifestyle, the, the fornicating, repent means stop from doing those things. And if you are a fornicator, guess what? The scripture says a man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. That's what it is. You wait for a wife and you deal with that. Mm -hmm. That's you repenting from fornication. Mm -hmm. The coveting, guess what? You stop from lusting in your mind from the things that you're seeing with your own eyes. Guess what? And you change your mindset from that, mm -hmm. right? And you're satisfied with what you have, mm -hmm. right? That's repentance. Right. So Christ came and what? Taught us what? He says from that time... Jesus began to preach. That was the start of his ministry. Right. And what is what did he say? He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now I'm here. Now I'm going to show you what it's like to what live a perfect life in the eyes of God. And I'm going to shed my blood for you. This is what it's about. Repent. That's Christ's message. So how do we get that blood of Christ to be worthy? We have to repent from our evil ways. The things that we're doing that's not right according to the words of God and change. There you go. Point all, blank. All this other stuff, people teaching in the Bible, they teaching this, they teaching that, and no one's dealing with the foundation. What did right. it say? From that time, he began <clears throat> to preach. Right. And what did he begin with? Repentance. Okay. Yeah. So who's teaching that? People want to, these, uh, these pastors around here get me, just trip me out. Getting all philosophical, political, and this and that. Going into all these deep discussions. Why not just do a pastor supposed to deal with the word? A true pastor in Christ is supposed to be seeing just what we deal with. Exactly. We do not stray from the reservation. 
and bring in our own thoughts, we go from scripture to scripture and explain it. Why can we explain it? Mm -hmm. Because we're living it. That's right. why. Exactly. This is not something that is strange. This is not, we come from the world. Exactly. Hell, last week, what do we have up here? Gangbangers, drug dealers, murderers, cats. And we were all out there teaching what? Repentance. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And people look at us and say, we crazy. No, we know how crazy you are because of what we come from. Right. That's the thing that people don't understand. That's why we know repentance works. Exactly. Because now, if we were all in our lives, back in the world, would we be hanging out with one another? Nope. Well, the group of us that was there, we probably would have been what? Fighting and trying to kill one another. Exactly. Because of the way we were in the world. Exactly. You tell me all the time how you grew up as a young man. Yeah. What you were around and what you had to deal with. Yep. You understand? As a young man, knowing what it is to maneuver your way around from gunfights or getting a knife or a gun for yourself to defend yourself. Right. A lot of people don't understand that. Right. They think that we just popped out the sky nope. and we didn't deal with this word repentance. Exactly. That's why we know how important it is. Exactly. And that's what people are meant. So what, what did Christ start with? You want my blood to cover you, guess what? Repent. You got to repent. Exactly. Period. Yep. Go ahead, bro. That's a good point because people... Just like you said, they see us and they think, oh, man, I don't know what they're talking about. Or, man, that that's not possible. No, it is possible. Because that's where we come from. We come from the, and we were doing the fornication, right? The the, the drug dealing, some of us, the, the, the whoremongering. Some of us. Some of us, right? That's what we were. Right. But we heard the word of God. We picked up the Bible for ourselves. We read it, we said, oh man, oh my goodness, yo, that is crazy, man, that is wicked as hell, man, I can't treat women like that, man, right. they can't. And what if that was my sister, I can't do that. Right. That's what it is, so repent is not a thing that's impossible. Right. It is. It's a fight. That's what it is. That's what it is, because these things are in our minds and it feels great. Right. Doing these things. Exactly. It feels good. Like you said, that guy right. got excited. Yeah. The money, and what did it do? That feeling corrupted him. Exactly. That lust, just like when we were in the world, we were being corrupted. Right. Just like you out there that don't understand repentance and not being taught it, you don't understand it, that you get corrupted by these things. But the Most High is gracious and merciful where he's reaching his hand out to tell you to come back. Exactly. But it's only, it can only be the way he prescribed. Exactly. That's the medicine. Yep. When you go to the doctor, the doctor describes you something to cure yourself. You don't do the opposite, do you? Nope. And then look for a, a solution and heal it. You nope. do exactly what the doctor says. Well, exactly. the doctor is Christ, and the one that gave him the cure and the understanding of it is who? The Most High. You're right, exactly. His Father. Yep. Exactly. So the cure is repentance. Exactly. So we have to follow that along the lines, if we even care about the blood. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, that's true. All right, so now mm -hmm. let's go from here to uh, Matthew 15. Mm -hmm. And we're going to read 19 and 20. So Christ came and taught us the first thing, repentance. So we're going to look at another aspect of the repentance. Mm -hmm. Where, What part of the body do we have to change when we're, make, when we're saying that um, we're going to do the repentance? Right. What part of the body? Yeah. We're at Matthew 5, 19 and 20. Matthew 5, 19 and 20? Yep. Matthew 5. No, I'm sorry. 15. Um, yeah, Matthew 15, 19 and 20. I'm Matthew sorry. 15, verses 19. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Okay, so Christ is saying that what? Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, all these different things, right? So when it says out of the heart, mm -hmm. the heart that it's talking about is our mind. Mm -hmm. So people talking about, oh man, it's just in my heart to do it. Yeah, you're talking about your mind. Right. So Christ is saying out of the mind proceed all these things, the evil thoughts, mm -hmm. and I know I still, all of us battle with it, mm -hmm. Right, and we constantly have to put it in check. Mm -hmm. I know I do mm -hmm. put it in check, saying, "You know what? Don't go down that path. Mm -hmm. That's not right. Those thoughts aren't right." Mm -hmm. 
the evil thoughts, the murders, the adulteries, fornication. So it's what? It's a battle of the mind. Right. So when that word repentance, yes, it's not going to be okay. I read the scripture. I, I read this Bible. <laughs> yeah, I repented. I stopped. No. no. Mm -mm. It's a battle of the mind. Right. That's why Christ is saying, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. And that's why I came and shed his blood. So it's a battle. But you have to start somewhere. You can't give in to those thoughts when they come in. Saying, you know, well, whatever the thought might be, you can't give in. You have to fight it. And eventually when we fight and fight it, what? The Lord will help us to mm -hmm. what? Move on to something else. Another battle that we have to fight. Right. When it, when the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 10.13 <clears throat> that there's no temptation that is what not common to men right. but the most high is merciful that he gives you a way out and right. that's what you were just explaining exactly. the scriptures say look at we have the way out we just have to be willing to take it and that's right. our problem right we don't want to take it because we want to be overcome and exactly. give in to our lust and go into covetous idolatrous blasphemous practices which is all what Issues concerning that come about from the mind. Exactly. It says, for out of the heart, meaning the mind, proceeds evil thoughts, murders, mm -hmm. adulteries, fornications, theft, fall, witnesses, and what? Blasphemies. Right. That's what you got going on in a lot of these so called churches. Exactly. Blasphemy. Yep. They say the Lord said when the Lord did not say that. Exactly. They's doing as the Lord when the Lord did not do that. Exactly. So what do you got? You got blasphemies, but you can't tell them nothing because they got a bunch of simple followers that's following them and they ain't reading their Bibles. Exactly. They just in this church nodding their head going amen, praise the plaster and pass the plate. Exactly. And it just continues on. Exactly. And what the Bible is showing us is that those things don't measure up to what we're dealing with in the Bible. Exactly. We, we you know, go ahead bro. Just go ahead. Yeah, no, that, that's a good point because so, like these things that are mentioned, that, that are mentioned rather mm -hmm. it starts in the mind. So mm -hmm. the murders. Right. Um, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again on the radio station, right? You have, if when you talk to people, like, that's, they, that's, um, they've committed, like, a lot of murders or whatever, they'll tell you the first murder that they committed when, before it happened, right? Whatever the, the scenario might have been, you know, someone pissed you off, whatever, said something to you the wrong way, and you just... They stepped on your shoe, whatever, some, whatever foolishness it is, right? And you're going to take revenge, you're going to take vengeance rather. Um, one of the first things that happens before the murder takes place, there's always something in their mind that says, don't do it. <laughs> then there's another voice, do it. <laughs> Vo then there, that battle goes back and forth, don't do it, do it, don't, 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 don't. Person finally gives in to that voice that says, do it. They go and they do it. But where did that all start? In your mind. That started in the mind. So now that first murder that you've committed, once you've committed that, I mean, Satan, that other voice that was something to do it, he's got you. See? Exactly. He's got you. Did now. make you feel good? Exactly. And now you it leads to more and right. more and more and Killing more and more. Because so, yeah, you, you gave in to that lust. Right, right, right. But it all started in the mind. So mm -hmm. that's what Christ is saying. And these are some of the things that we have to look at. Mm -hmm. That's that blood of Christ that came. And it's not too late. If you're list, out there listening, watching or whatever, and you're like that, it ain't too late. It's like, if you're living and breathing, it ain't too late for you to change. That's why we read that very first scripture where Paul says... This is a faithful saying and acceptable of all, um, worthy of all acceptation, that Christ came into the world to die for sinners of whom I am chief. Paul right. was a murderer. Right. So it's not too late. Right. You still have a chance to get it right and to repent. Yep. That's the whole point. And it ain't like the last minute thing they show you on TV. No. Nah. You all kind of did when you're on your deathbed, you take your last breath, you repent, then no. It has to be what we say, fruits. Right. It has to be, act, like he said, don't store up your treasures on earth. Store the things in heaven. What are those? Those are the fruits, the works. The right. things that you do that are in line with the Most High right. to reserve your spot in heaven. Right. That's the thing. That's what right. we need to be working on. That's what we mean about repentance. So the time is now to turn your life around and start to live according to not what we say, right. but what the Bible says. 
And don't get it twisted, it ain't that corrupt word that you're getting out here in the world from most of these, what, corrupt, evil, wicked pastors. It's not something that we specially got. It's right. written, but you got to read it for yourself to understand what's right and what's not right. right. What's corrupt and how people are misusing the word right. and how to follow and guide yourself in the world. Word. Right. Go ahead. Exactly. All right, so now let's go from there to uh, John 15 and 3. Right. <clears throat> John 15, verse 3. It reads, But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye no, all... No, 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 no. John 15. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm yeah. 15. Yep, John 15 and 3. Okay. So now sorry. we're going to deal with... Um, so now we've read where Christ mm -hmm. says repent and out of my mind, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And he just brought out the point, says it's not what we're saying. Mm -hmm. Picking up your Bible, reading it for yourself. So what is what's written in the Bible? What is that called? Let's read John 15 and 3 and let's see what it does. John 15 verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. It says now ye are clean through the word. Now this, the way how it's written might seem like, okay, I read, uh, well, Christ says out of the heart proceed evil thoughts and I'm going to do it. Now I'm clean. No, it, like we explained before, it's a process. Right, right. But Christ is saying that now you're clean, so if we take a hold, if we take heed to mm -hmm. what he said, his words, mm -hmm. that will make us clean in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. That's what cleanses us. Mm -hmm. Not being dunked in a pool, mm -hmm. right? That doesn't clean us. That doesn't clean our minds. Right. That doesn't clean our consciousness. Because that's what needs to work. Exactly, because that's what needs to work and that's what needs to be cleansed mm -hmm. for us to stop committing these vile acts that mm -hmm. happens in our communities and amongst us. Mm -hmm. That's what has to be cleansed, our minds. So Christ is saying, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. If we can apply the words that we just read, what he told us, not covered in, the murders, the thefts, the fornication, all these things that's in our mind. If we can apply those things, that will make us clean and that will make us, that will make his blood worthy that he shed for us. Right. Those, that's the thing that we have to look at. All right. So let's go from there to Acts uh, chapter 2. And we're going to read here. Let's see. Acts chapter 2, um, verses 38. Read that. Acts 2, verse 38. <clears throat> then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so the scriptures here is saying, now, just above that, when you read it, what happened was um, the people that put Christ to death and they're yelling out, crucify him, crucify him. They really didn't know what, was, what they were doing. They didn't know that this was the man that was sent for us to die for our sins. So when they finally came to their senses and they're like, oh man, damn, we put this guy to death. Then they were like, okay, Peter, man, what shall we do? We're murderers. Mm -hmm. Peter said unto them, repent. Notice that same theme, that same um, that, that same exhortation, that same thing coming out, repent. And we mentioned it before, the Bible is a book of repentance right. from the beginning to the yeah. very end. So the same thing that Christ started out his ministry by saying, Peter said the same thing. Mm -hmm. You, you want to know what you got to do to get it right because you put Christ to death? Repent. Mm -hmm. Change. Mm -hmm. Change your mindset. Repent. Stop from doing those things. Stop it. Repent. Right. It says, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Christ. The baptism that we just read in John 15. Now ye are clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. That's how we clean, clean up our acts. That's how we become baptized. Right. Not by being dunked in a pool. Right. Or in a in a river or in the river Jordan, whatever it is. Right, just the point though, he said baptized in Christ. Right. And the scripture tells us what the baptism of Christ is. It says you are clean to the word. Exactly. So the baptism of Christ and what he's talking about here that we have to be baptized is different than where that dunking in water comes from in ancient times when they had to cleanse themselves before they went into the sanctuary. And people still today in the world today think that that something that we supposed to be taking heed to, but right. this is the baptism that we need to be paying attention to. 
Exactly. And he, I mean, if you just think about it, too, I mean, okay, what sense does it make? Okay, you're a murderer, a big-time adulter um, adulterer, fornicator, whatever it, the, the case might be, right? And you say, okay, I want to change my life. I'm a homosexual. I want to change my life. I'm going to get baptized. Okay, so you go in a pool or a river or wherever, you get dumped, you come back up. Ask yourself, do you really think that's going to change you? Do you think that? What sense does that make? It doesn't make sense at all. How is that going to change? Just by getting your head goes on the water for like five seconds, and now all of a sudden you come back up and you change? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's laughable, really, when you think about it. That doesn't change you. What changes you is saying, you know what? I have to change my mind. I have to change those thought process, I can't look at another man and think he's fine or he's someone to be with or I can't do that. That's that's wrong. That changes you. Right? That's how we change ourselves. So it says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Christ for the remission of sins. That's how the blood of Christ is going to change us and that's how we're going to get that remission. One last scripture, 1 Corinthians 6. 19 through 20. We're going to read that. To show that it's not a light thing and our bodies is not our own. And we have to take heed to it. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, verse 19. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are brought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, so the scripture is saying that what? The temple, meaning our body that we have, is not our own. We were bought with a price. That's why Christ came and shed his blood for us. That's the price that he right, paid. Right, right. And we're not our own, so we shouldn't take it lightly, and we should take heed to these things. And that's how we make what the blood of Christ worthy mm -hmm. for the remission of sins. That's how we do it. Mm -hmm. All right? All right, so we say shalom. Okay.